is essentially an ensemble piece, but it revolves, the story is centres around Marlene, who has just been appointed managing director of the Top Girls Employment Agency. And she has throws a dinner party to celebrate her success. And to the dinner, she invites fictional as well as historical characters from all sort of eras of history. So people like Pope Joan, who was Pope in the ninth century, Isabella Bird, who was a Victorian intrepid traveller, Lady Nijo, who was a 13th century actually 14th century courtesan and uh, she became a Buddhist nun and walked around Buddhist nun and walked around Japan for 20 years. Uh, Dal Gret, who is a fictional character from Bruegel's painting uh, and there's also a silent character, the waitress who serves these women at this sort of five-star snazzy dinner. sense the plot's really simple but because of the disjointed chronology chronology of the play the interrupted dialogue the uh, overlapping dialogue there's actually the discourses and narratives in the play is actually quite complex and this is what makes the play so wonderful in that we have a fairly simple story but through it is enmeshed all these fantastic sort of political personal arguments Top Girls is set in the 1980s, early 1980s, when Maggie Thatcher was Prime Minister of Great Britain and of course she was the first female Prime Minister in the history of Britain. So it was a time where feminists were excited that there was a woman Prime Minister and also some feminists were very unexcited because of Maggie Thatcher's very right-wing conservative policies, which in a sense were the beginnings of neoliberalism in terms of um, cutting back on the welfare state, introducing monetarism, um, actually sort of smashing the unions in any which way they could, either through policy or through, you know, police on horseback with tear gas and, right, and you know, smashing workers. So it was a time where the haves and the have-nots, the gap grew bigger under the guise of individualism. So if you've got it, you can make it. It's a very American sort of, which is a very sort of now neoliberalist um, philosophy. So in this we see um, Top Girls is probably one of the most important contemporary plays because Carol Churchill introduced, it was the, one of the first writers to introduce interrupted dialogue, overlapping dialogue and a interrupted chronology. So in a sense what she creates through this highly theatrical um, technique where there's slashes and actors have to interject, talk over each other. Sometimes there's three people talking at once. As a director, the, the um, challenge is to be able to pull, pluck the eyes out of it so the audience can hear all of the conversations happening at once as well as um, follow what's going on. So it is like being at a dinner party full of excited women where we are capable of actually having lots of um, conversations at once, talking, listening, as well as, you know, three. We can do three, we can even do four. So she's managed to create this sort of naturalism, heightened naturalism, and the irony is that it's a highly theatricalised way of doing it. So I think in this, this um, form of interrupted dialogue, overlapping, it sort of has been emulated by writers in the Western world ever since.